Hi everyone! This is the second part of the video where I explain the possibility of using 3D objects as a part of a 2D scene in the Godot engine. And because I received several requests for a continuation that would clarify other aspects of this simple 3D puzzle, that's exactly what this video is about. Let's take a look. To start, I would briefly remind you what this is all about. The puzzle appears in our point-and-click adventure game Whispers of Prague, where the main character enters an abandoned chapel, discovers a mysterious mechanism, and has to figure out the correct combination to progress further. The entire game is created as a 2D scene, however, we decided to use a 3D model for this element because it's easier to manipulate, which I will explain shortly. Let's take a quick look. This is it. Okay. And exit the game. If you haven't seen the first part, I definitely recommend watching that first, because in it I explain in detail the use of sub-viewport for this purpose. You can find the link to the mentioned video in the description of this video. So, we won't be dealing with the projection of 3D into 2D, which was the focus of the first part. Instead, we'll look at how this puzzle actually works from a technical perspective. So, what do we have here? In the 3D editor, we can see that the mechanism consists of four disks, one, two, three, four, which are four instances of the same model that we created in Blender. Additionally, there are two light sources, one, two, and of course a camera that ensures the projection of the scene into 2D. But let's take a closer look at the disks. When we expand the transform section in the inspector, actually I have to scroll down here and here it is, we can see that each disk is positioned on the y-axis as the x and uh, y coordinates are set to zero. The bottommost disk, this one, uh, is even placed at the origin itself since y is also zero and each subsequent disk is shifted up the y-axis by 53 centimeters like we can see it right here actually shows yeah 0 0.29999 0 0.3 and the third one and the last one the topmost okay this creates uh, the unified structure we can see in the editor there is also a 15 degrees tilt, but that's not important. It was likely for fine-tuning the final visual effect. So, as you could have seen in the demo at the beginning of this video, the disks, disks rotate when we click the mouse at a certain spot. It's important to emphasize here that the sub-viewport, this one, which contains the 3D scene, does not process any mouse click events by itself. It functions only as a texture generator for the sprite 2D. This one, here it is. Uh, yeah, for the sprite 2D over which we placed uh, other 2D elements. Let's take a look at this in the 2D editor. Okay, and I think we have to make it visible by clicking here. Very well. Do you see these eight red rectangles? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let me enlarge it. Okay, now it's better. These are nodes of the reference rect type. You can see it here in the editor. Reference rect, it is an internal class of Godot Engine. Which is extended a bit and named, and we named this class Hotspot. It's an element that we use throughout our game wherever we need to capture and process mouse events. All eight elements are linked to the same script, which is called turn dial. Let me click that. 
Let's take a look at that. So in the script, we have the function do action, this one, which overrides the declaration in the hotspot class and is called whenever the game detects a left mouse button click. When we look into the hotspot class, let me just click here to find it. Yeah, this is the hotspot class. We can see that in the process function right here, uh, the action is captured. Input is the action just pressed action. This action is mapped in project settings input map. Here, uh, well, yeah, action left mouse button all devices. The essential point is that the mouse click is processed on this element which has additional properties set as export variables. Let's get back to this and open the script and we can see it right here. The first one, dial 3D, this is simply a reference to mesh instance 3D, which is basically one of these four disks, and turn direction, which can be either left or right. This combination clearly determines which disk we will rotate and whether it would rotate to the left or right. So, as I mentioned, the mouse click is captured on the referent rect, not on the subview part. The referent rect is an invisible element, so it appears as uh, we are clicking on the 3D model of the disk, but in reality, we are clicking on an invisible rectangle that overlies the disk. And what happens when we click? In the script, let's click back, this is a function do action. We can see that first the sound of moving a stone is played and then the turn left or turn right function is called on the specific disk. This script is also shared by all the disks, so we can do it just once. Let's open it in the editor. So this is the Mesh Instance 3D and it contains this script, Mesh Instance 3D. We can see that both functions, turn left and turn right, are the same, differing only in the change of the current number selected on the disk. Either it increases it by one or decreases. It will certainly be possible to merge both functions into one and save a few lines of the script, but it works like this as well. On each disk, we have 12 numbers, like on the clock, so it's necessary to ensure that their values rotate. When the current number is 12, uh, and we rotate left, the next number wouldn't be 13, but 1. And similarly, when rotating right, and the current number is 1, we just set 12, not 0. Both functions call the change number function, which sets, here it is, which sets the new number to the internal variable number and performs some additional settings here that are not relevant to the puzzle itself. The rotation of the disks and the evaluation of whether the player has found the correct combination occur in the process function right here, which, as we know, Godot engine calls on every frame. Of course, it wouldn't make sense to check whether the puzzle is solved in every frame. We do it only after each click on a disk and with a one second delay. For this, we use the variable check numbers timer, which is set to one after each click. We can see it where we can see it, wait a minute, Check. ah, here it is, it is set to, to 1 uh, after each click, yes, uh, and then it decreases by the delta value until it reaches 0, which is ensured by the internal function move toward, oh, this one, move toward, when it reaches 0, the is resolved function is called and if it returns true, the puzzle is solved. The game then plays a different sound and performs an action unrelated to this matter. The function is resolved is actually very simple 
and its execution takes only a few milliseconds. It simply checks the current state of the all four disks and compares them to the uh, to the correct solution. Uh, naturally, this isn't as, as straightforward as one 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 one, but for the purposes of the video, I replaced the correct solution with with this uh, just to avoid spoilers. All right. So what about rotating the disks? They are uh, mesh instance 3D instances, so we can utilize the rotation property. Here it is, as it is included in the mesh instance 3D class. And change its y value, eh, sorry, change its y value, since we want to rotate around the y axis only. Uh, just to remind, in Godot Engine, the y-axis is oriented vertically, which might be a bit confusing for those accustomed, for example, to the z-axis in this direction in Blender. So, in the process function, we first determine the target rotation of the disk, here it is, using the current value of a number. It is done in the function getDialRotation, here it is. Uh, yeah, so we simply just calculate the angle in degrees and this is what would be passed no, in degrees and converted to radians that would be passed to the rotation value on the y-axis. So we know the current rotation, this is rotation.y and the target rotation taken from, taken from this function. All we need to do now is to transition between these two states. Of course, we could simply set the rotation y to this new value, but then we'd lose that nice rotating animation. We can see how it would look in the game. So let's just temporarily replace this part with target rotation and start it. Okay, and can you see? It just snaps to the position. There is no actual rotating. It doesn't look as good. Let's exit the game and put it back. So I return the original code and the function LARP angle performs linear interpolation between the current and the new and the new angle value. The third argument, this one, is the interpolation weight, which is a number between 0 and 1 where 0 represents the initial state and 1 uh, represents the final state and anything in between represents the transition state. But why do we have this minimum function here? It is to prevent unexpected results because it could happen that on a slow computer with a high delta value we could get here a result uh, a result that would be greater than 1, which could lead to uh, results we cannot predict. So it's better uh, to safeguard against this like this. Okay, let's see it once again, and this time with the resolved effect. Click, and as I said, everything is set to 1, so we should just select 1 on all four disks. And this one, wait one second, and yeah, opening, and we can go down to the darkness. Let's exit. And that's it. There is nothing more complicated to it. The whole trick is based on capturing mouse clicks in the 2D scene and then calling a function in the 3D scene that rotates the 3D object, followed by evaluating whether the puzzle is solved. I hope the code explanation was clear enough. If not, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll be happy to clarify further. For now, take care and I'll see you in the next video, where we'll probably try out some interesting shaders again.